everyone, and welcome back for another deep dive. We're going to be tackling something pretty fascinating today. Oh, yeah. What's that? Imperial College London. Okay. They've decided to set up their first major international hub in Ghana. Wow, Ghana. Yeah. That's interesting. We're going to be working with source material directly from an interview okay. with the university's president, uh, Professor Hugh Brady. Now, we know Imperial College is a global leader in STEM. STEM. Yes. That's science, technology, engineering, medicine, and business. Oh, wow. Okay. So, why Ghana? What makes this partnership so special? That's exactly what we're going to uncover today. I'm excited. It's interesting, isn't it? Imperial College has built a reputation for going beyond theoretical research. Mm -hmm. They are truly committed to applying their expertise to solve real-world challenges. You're absolutely right. And that's a point that Professor Brady really drove home in the interview. Um, they're looking for solutions to global issues like uh, climate change yeah. and ensuring food security for all. Right. These are big issues. Mm -hmm. But here's where it gets really interesting. Okay. They chose Ghana as the location for their first major international hub. Mm. So what do you think is behind that decision? Well, it definitely suggests that Ghana is being recognized as a potential powerhouse for research and innovation. Mm. It's not just a random choice. Imperial College already has strong collaborations with Ghanaian institutions, mm -hmm. especially the University of Ghana and the African Institute for Mathematical Sciences. I see. In fact, they've been working together on some pretty groundbreaking projects in medical diagnostics, hmm. vaccine design, right. and sustainable development. I'm really intrigued by this idea of team science that Professor Brady touched upon in the interview. Oh, yeah. In a world that's becoming more and more interconnected, it seems like the most significant breakthroughs happen when researchers from different countries and disciplines pool their knowledge and resources. Right. This hub in Ghana feels like a perfect embodiment of that concept. Absolutely. And it's not just about continuing existing projects. It's about amplifying their impact. Mm. Professor Brady envisions an even more impactful collaboration fueled by this spirit of team science. Okay. What's fascinating is that they're not just bringing existing expertise to Ghana. They're also tapping into Ghana's unique strengths. Yeah. One area they're particularly excited about is generative AI. Okay, let's unpack this a bit. For those who might not be as familiar with generative AI, could you give us a quick rundown of what it is oh, sure. and why it's causing such a buzz? Generative AI is a type of artificial intelligence that can actually create new content. Hmm. Imagine a computer program that can write text, compose music, wow. or even design new molecules for medicine. It's a rapidly developing field with the potential to revolutionize many sectors from healthcare to education, to environmental sustainability. Sounds like something straight out of science fiction. But you're right, the possibilities are mind-boggling. And Imperial College is jumping right into this field, partnering with Ghanaian institutions and joining the prestigious Eric and Wendy Schmidt AI Fellows Program. What makes this partnership in Ghana particularly significant in the field of AI, do you think? Well, for one, it's not a solo mission. This program also includes partners from Malaysia, Brazil, and India, creating a truly global network of AI expertise. Ah, I see. But what makes Ghana stand out is its unique blend of ingredients that create a perfect storm for innovation. I love that analogy, a perfect storm for innovation. Yeah. What are the specific factors in Ghana that make it such a promising location? Ghana has a young, tech-savvy population hmm. that's eager to embrace new technologies. Uh -huh. Its economy is growing rapidly, and the government is actively promoting innovation and technological advancement. Professor Brady specifically mentioned the enthusiastic support they've received from the Schmidt program and the strong network of Imperial College alumni already working in Ghana as key factors in their decision. It's incredible how all these elements are coming together to create this ideal environment for cutting edge research and development. But wouldn't focusing so heavily on advanced technology like AI risk overlooking simpler, more accessible solutions that could also benefit the people of Ghana? That's a very valid point. It's crucial to strike a balance between investing in cutting edge technology and addressing the immediate needs of the community. Professor Brady acknowledges that and emphasizes that their work will be deeply intertwined with Ghana's own development goals, focusing on areas where technology can have the most tangible and immediate impact. So it's not just about bringing technology to Ghana. It's about using technology to empower Ghana 
to reach its full potential. Exactly. And to do that effectively, mm -hmm. you need a deep understanding mm -hmm. of the specific challenges and opportunities present in Ghana. Mm -hmm. This is where collaborating with local institutions and researchers becomes so crucial. It ensures that the solutions developed are tailored to the specific needs and context of the Ghanaian people. That makes perfect sense. So, what are the key areas where Imperial College sees the most potential for collaboration with their Ghanaian partners? Professor Brady highlighted medical diagnostics, vaccine design, environmental health, mm -hmm. and urbanization as areas where they see the most promising avenues for joint research and innovation. Okay. These are all critically important areas, not just for Ghana, but for the entire world. I'm curious why these specific areas, what makes them stand out? as priorities for this collaboration. Oh, think about it. Medical diagnostics and vaccine design, they're key to global health security. Right. And with the increasing threat of pandemics and drug-resistant diseases, these areas are more important than ever. That's a really good point. And what about environmental health and urbanization? How do those fit into the bigger picture? As Ghana's population grows yeah. and cities expand, Ensuring a healthy environment and sustainable urban development becomes crucial. Okay. This is where Imperial College's expertise in areas like pollution monitoring, urban planning, okay. and renewable energy technologies can have a real impact. You mentioned earlier that they're not starting from scratch. Researchers from Ghana and Imperial College are already actively collaborating on these topics. That's right. What are some of the exciting projects that are already underway? One project that stands out is using AI to analyze environmental data to predict the impacts of climate change on Ghana's coastal regions. Wow. Another project focuses on developing personalized educational tools that can adapt to the specific learning needs of students in rural communities. Those are some amazing examples of how technology can be used to address real world challenges in a targeted and impactful way. Absolutely. But as we delve deeper into these complex issues, I'm reminded of something Professor Brady stressed in the interview. What's that? The importance of effective communication. Absolutely. It's one thing to have all this incredible research and development happening, but if you can't communicate the findings yeah. in a way that people understand and connect with, it's hard to drive real change. It makes you think about the sheer volume of information we're bombarded with every day. How can researchers break through the noise? and ensure that their work reaches the people who need it most. That's where they're clear. Engaging communication becomes absolutely essential. It's not about dumbing down complex topics. It's about finding ways to make them accessible and relatable to a wider audience. Professor Brady emphasized that Imperial College is committed to making their research accessible to everyone, not just the academic community. Right. They want to empower people to understand the challenges we face and feel like they can be part of the solution. That's a crucial aspect of this collaboration. It's not just about bringing in technology and expertise from outside. It's about building capacity within Ghana. Okay. It's about empowering Ghanaian researchers, entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. and communities to take ownership of these challenges and be part of shaping their own future. That's really inspiring. It feels like this project has the potential to create a ripple effect, fostering innovation and collaboration that extends far beyond the immediate partners. Precisely. And that's exactly the kind of impact Professor Brady is hoping for. He wants to create a model for global collaboration, one where institutions from different parts of the world come together to share knowledge resources, and expertise to tackle the world's most pressing challenges. And he extended a personal invitation to students and researchers to get involved, urging them to come and join us. It's clear that he believes this initiative has the potential to nurture the next generation of problem solvers. That's what struck me as well. It's not just about building a research facility. It's about building a community of passionate individuals dedicated to making a real difference in the world. I have to admit, I'm getting pretty fired up about this. It's refreshing to see a project that combines cutting edge technology with a deep commitment to social impact and global collaboration. It's definitely something to be excited about. And the, the best part is that this is just the beginning, Professor Brady emphasized, that they're open to expanding their collaborations even further. They wanna work with other institutions, organizations, and individuals who share their vision for a better future. I love that openness to collaboration. It really speaks to the spirit of this project. It's not about claiming ownership or competing for resources. It's about working together to achieve something truly extraordinary. And that brings us back to you, the listener, because ultimately these challenges affect all of us. That's right. Whether you're a student, a researcher, mm. an entrepreneur, 
or simply someone who cares about the future of our planet. You have a role to play. This deep dive has been incredibly inspiring. It's amazing to see how Imperial College is partnering with Ghanaian institutions to tackle some of the world's most pressing challenges. It's a powerful reminder that innovation can happen anywhere and that collaboration is key to solving complex problems. And what's so exciting is this isn't just about academics, it's about making a tangible difference in people's lives. Right. This hub has the potential to create jobs, yeah. improve health outcomes, and build a more sustainable future for Ghana and beyond. It's a testament to the power of human ingenuity and the potential for positive change when we pool our resources and expertise like this. Professor Brady summed it up perfectly when he said, Together, we'll nurture the next generation of researchers, innovators, and problem solvers, making a lasting difference. That's a message that should resonate with every single one of us. Absolutely. So as we wrap up this deep dive into Imperial College's new hub in Ghana, we want to leave you with a final thought to ponder. Okay. If you could collaborate on a project that tackled a global challenge, what would it be and why? Hmm. What problem are you passionate about solving? What change do you want to see in the world? Think big. Think bold. And remember that even small actions can have a ripple effect. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. We'll see you next time. <laughs>